Do you ever find yourself so completely immersed in what you're doing that you lose track of time? Perhaps you were making music, riding a bike, surveying a wave, or working on a big project. Whatever activity you were doing, all of a sudden you look up at the clock and realize that hours have passed and you miss dinner time. Now that's called flow. The greatest people in history use this state of mind to push boundaries, overcome challenges, and unlock their full potential. Leonardo da Vinci, for example, was in the flow state when he painted the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. Einstein was in deep flow when he formulated the theory of relativity. Steve Jobs when he founded Apple and Michael Jordan whenever he was playing on the court. But his flow state doesn't just unlock deep focus and productivity, it also unlocks happiness. Mahi Csikszentmihalyi, who is considered the founding father of flow psychology, called it the secret to happiness. So what exactly is flow? Flow is often described as a state of consciousness that makes work feel effortless. People are so focused on the task at hand that everything seems to disappear, like they're in the zone and feel as if there is a merging of their actions and their awareness. When people feel flow, they are in a state of intense concentration. The thoughts are focused on an experience rather than on themselves, and they lose a sense of time, like time freezes and five hours go by in like five minutes. When Mihai was interviewing individuals about the moments in their lives when they felt the happiest and performed the best, he identified seven key conditions that tend to manifest when an individual enters a state of flow. These include feeling completely involved in what they are doing, a sense of ecstasy, great inner clarity, knowing the activity is doable, a sense of serenity, timelessness, and intrinsic motivation. But how can we get into a state of flow? Flow occurs when the task challenge is balanced with one's skill. The idea is that we pay the most attention to the task at hand when a challenge of the task slightly exceeds our skill level. For instance, we won't feel flow when we're doing the dishes because most people are highly skilled dishwashers and washing dishes is not a very challenging task to begin with. However, snowboarding or playing chess are activities that are more challenging and need our utmost concentration in order to meet our skill level and to do well in the activity. So the challenge must not be so great that our efforts seem futile, which can create a state of anxiety, but it also must not be so small that we get no reward, creating a state of boredom. Besides this challenge skills balance, two other conditions need to be present for flow to occur. The activity must provide specific goals to keep the person's attention focused, and clear feedback must be provided to allow the person to adjust the progression. According to Mihai, happiness is not something that just happens. It's not the result of good fortune or random chance, and it's not something money can buy or power commands. In his research, he found that once a person makes it a little beyond the average poverty level, their material resources don't affect how happy they are. So to think that you would be happier if you just had a nicer house or a high salary is therefore simply wrong. As Viktor Frankl, the Austrian psychologist, described it in his book Man's Search of Meaning, don't aim at success. The more you aim at it and make it a target, the more you are going to miss it. For success, like happiness, cannot be pursued. So happiness isn't something we stumble upon or find like a hidden treasure. It's something that we create within ourselves by how we perceive and engage with the world around us. Now, interestingly, research has discovered that people who consistently report high levels of well-being and life satisfaction are those who regularly experience flow. This is because flow promotes a sense of engagement and absorption. This absorption helps to quiet the constant chatter of our minds and allows us to temporarily let go of worries and concerns. Flow also provides a clear sense of purpose and progress. When we engage in activities that challenge and stretch our abilities just enough, we get a sense of progress and achievement. Lastly, flow experiences provides a sense of control and mastery. When we are in flow, we have a sense of control over our own actions and outcomes. We feel that our skills and efforts have a direct impact on the task at hand, and this perception of mastery and autonomy generates feelings of self-confidence and empowerment, strengthening our sense of self and contribute to our overall happiness. Unfortunately, in today's world, there are so many things that distract us and prevent us from getting into a state of flow. Many of us wake up and the first thing we do is grab our phones. We then spend the next hour scrolling through social media and getting bombarded with tons of information that interrupts our focus and flow. What we should do instead is to try not using our phone for the first few hours after waking up and use the time to focus on the most important work that we have to do that day. However, even if we manage to get rid of all the distractions around us, sometimes it's still tough to get into that state of flow where everything just seems to click. This is because of something that's called flow proneness, which is basically a natural tendency to access that state of flow and how likely you are to experience it. Studies have found that our flow proneness is at its highest first thing in the morning. 
So a good strategy is to start working straight after waking up. Of course, it's important to remember that what works best can vary from person to person. Some individuals might find that evenings are the prime time for achieving a state of flow, while others find their brain works best after a nap or in the morning. Now, there's another important aspect to consider when it comes to flow, and that's the environment. Creating an environment that supports your flow state can make a significant difference. A messy desk, for instance, often leads to a messy brain. So keeping your workspace clean and organized and free from distractions that might break your concentration will help you get into that state of flow. So how can we get into a state of flow and unlock happiness? Well, let's put all of this information together in some actionable steps. Step one, identify your flow activities. If you want to get into a flow state and unlock happiness on command, you first need to identify those activities that you enjoy the most and that have those three flow triggers present, which are a clear goal, immediate feedback, and a challenge skills balance. You can do this by simply making a list of activities you know you will enjoy and will get you in the flow state. These activities could be anything that aligns with your interests and passions, whether it's playing a musical instrument, engaging in a sport you love, or pursuing a hobby that challenges you. Step number two, identify when you're most focused during the day. To make the most of your day and get things done effectively, it's important to align your task with the time when your brain is most alert and focused. So by identifying your optimal time for focus, you can prevent yourself from spreading too thin, saving the precious time for the most important task, the ones that truly require your full attention and effort. Step number three, remove distractions. To enhance your ability to enter a state of flow and maintain focus on your task, it is crucial to minimize distractions from your digital devices. Your phone with its constant notifications and access to social media can easily pull you away from the present moment and disrupt your flow. So by turning off your phone or setting it to silent mode, you can create a conducive environment for deep concentration and uninterrupted work. In addition to managing phone distractions, it is equally important to disable email notifications. The constant chimes or pop-ups can disrupt your train of thoughts and draw your attention away from the task at hand. Step number four, add an element of challenge. As I covered earlier, when the challenges you face are too easy, you might find yourself becoming bored or disinterested. So in order to enter the flow state, you need to increase the level of challenge. By stretching yourself just a little bit, you can get into the zone and fully immerse and engage in what you're doing. That's why the challenge skills balance is so important. Step number five, schedule daily recovery times. Finally, it's important to allocate a specific time each day for complete detachment from work and technology. This time, known as recovery time, allows you to recharge and rebalance yourself effectively. During this period, you can engage in activities that bring you joy and relaxation, spending quality time with loved ones, taking a walk with your dog, or practicing meditation are all great options. So by incorporating these steps into your weekly and daily routines, you will gradually experience more flow in your everyday life. And as a result, you will find yourself more focused on what truly matters to you while minimizing the impact of distractions and increasing your overall happiness. If you want to learn more about the science of well-being, aka happiness, make sure to watch the next video so you can start building happiness into your life.